always keep your eyes on the airplane. Okay. We want to keep the airplane in front of us. We never want to let it get behind us. Okay. Joe will take over if, it's, if, if we get it that way. But that's a big no-no. Spinning propellers can do a lot of damage. Today we're going to explore a hobby that's not only fun, but also teaches you about aerodynamics, wind and weather, electronics, robotics, and more. Join us as we visit the Rivano Radio Control Club. Come on. We want to be entertained. How entertained? <laughs> Hayward, who can join the club? Anyone's willing to follow the rules and be safe like you did today. And be safe. So talk about the rules and, and the importance of these rules in, in flying. Well, we don't want to hurt anybody. No. Yeah, mm -hmm. or anybody's property. And we're very careful about that. And uh, you're aware of uh, all kinds of things going on around the world, people flying models in places they shouldn't. That's not us. No. We have a very uh, stern and complete set of rules nationally with the Academy of Model Aeronautics and with our club members as well that govern safety and sound emissions and things like that. Uh, we're not allowed to fly over other people. We're not allowed to fly more than a certain distance or out of sight. We're very careful about that. We have patterns we fly so you know where to look in the sky and we check people out. Yeah, and you fly at Milton Field. Talk about Milton Field. Milton Field's a treasure. Uh, it was part of Mr. Jefferson's uh, plantation at Monticello at one time. He did some wonderful experiments in uh, water-powered sawmills and things there on that property. Uh, it was used uh, as a farm all the way until 1939. The University of Virginia bought it, and they started a flying school, which was taken over by the Navy and the Army, and they did a lot of training of pilots for World War II there. Mm -hmm. And I flew full size in there until 69. Oh, wow. And in 72, the club has, uh, the, the Model Aviation Club, Ravana, has uh, maintained and run the field since. And the university still owns it. And they are very cooperative. And uh, we have a good relationship with them. We actually help sometimes some of their people out there. They use it for uh, aeronautical engineering. Uh, the SALT II treaty uh, air sensors out there, all kinds of things go on more and more now uh, of the university related things. So uh, it's a great relationship we have with the university at this point. So we're here today with Who's Flying, the RC plane club at UVA to observe some of the planes, see what the construction's like so we could get tips on constructing our own plane and then also get some of our members exposed to how to fly, because right now we don't have a pilot. Hopefully it turns out better than last year. We ended in a crash. Yeah. That last is year, not the hope of this year. Last year we did crash our plane right before competition, so we didn't get to go. So this is kind of like a redemption year for us. Control uh, and focus is the most important part of flying. Uh, I lost my first apprentice, lost control, and it flew off out of sight and uh, never to be seen again. Actually, I've never flown the planes. It was a very difficult skill for me to learn, so I ended up going the drone route because for me it's much easier to fly and I have more fun doing it. My son is the airplane pilot, so I let him do all that. Talk about the benefits of being a member of this club. It's what I do to stay, have a balance in life so I can uh, be together with friends with a common idea, uh, things we enjoy, and be outside, uh, have the use of Milton Field, uh, we teach each other, we learn things. The youngest club member is about how old? 12 uh, or 14? Yeah, probably 12. And, and the oldest is probably how old? We have several in the 90s. That's, uh, that's They are not necessarily active, but they still on the rolls. It's a great retirement hobby. Uh, and as I say, it gives you a way to get outside with, with a bunch of friends. Yeah. Um, all the things that make airplanes fly are how the world works, you know, it's, it's physics. Well, and what's great, I think, is that you don't have to know any of this to become a member. You don't even have, you don't have to know how to fly. You all teach members we will, how to fly. We will provide an instructor. We will provide a training aircraft. Uh, there is no cost to that. You must join the Academy of Model Aeronautics because that's where our umbrella insurance comes right. from. Right. And you must uh, eventually join the club, but you don't want, you have to do that in order to go out and fly, as you found out this morning. Yeah. Uh, there's also a kind of an important thing is, these planes of mine, 
that you're seeing here are uh -huh. kind of unusual. You don't have to be this deep in the hobby. You can get into it as deeply as you want. You can go buy a plane off the shelf. Right. Like this one. Right. You can buy this off the shelf and fly it, you know, as soon as you've charged the battery. Uh, or you can spend quite a long time doing what I do over here, which is d actually design planes and make the original drawings and actually build directly on the plan. And what about the weather? Seems like perfect weather to me. Doesn't get better than this. Very little wind. The windsock over there is hanging, drooping. It's from the right direction that we like. Clear sky. Instead of just the controller, you actually have a physical object that you not only need to learn how to carefully use, but take care of, maintenance, uh, and really just make sure that you know how to operate it carefully. If you're going on a hike and you're standing at the edge of a cliff and you're looking out into the valley, well, you can take a drone with you and fly it out in front of you and you get a view of you standing on the edge of the cliff that you could never get otherwise if you didn't have it with you. So it allows you to see different perspective of what you're seeing around you at any given time. So it's pretty cool. It was the best experience here today. Uh, flying a plane, it's sort of my first time. It was just fun being in the air. It was amazing today. Aside from a plane, what else do you need to fly? Uh, I see what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, you need a radio system. Okay. And radio systems can be fancy or simple. Uh, I have radio systems here that probably cost 30 some bucks. And they run on batteries? They do. Uh, okay. This is a very uh, recent uh, innovation. And this one is uh, capable of flying uh, 250 planes. So and, it will play, and it will play music. You can program. It will. <laughs> Whether we really want to do that or not. <laughs> it will play the Eagles. <laughs> it will play the Eagles or anything you want it to. So but, uh, I can demonstrate if you want. Oh, that'd be great. You want. Yeah, this be this great. is a Ferry Fulmer 1940 Fleet Defense Fighter. I designed it right there on that table. It's a, this fuselage is, is completely scale. And uh, this is the aileron that makes it bank. That was bank right, that bank left. Uh -huh. this, uh, this is nose up, nose down, and the, and the rudder, which uh, is to contract adverse yaw. And uh, so these, these all are exactly the way a, a full-size plane flies. This, this is a real plane. It just doesn't have a person on it. So. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to reach over and turn that off just for safety reasons. So you've been fascinated with planes. <laughs> That's Safety perfect. first. But you've been fascinated with planes since you were young, and so you've just tell us really quickly about a handful of the planes that you've designed from scratch. We've talked about that. What is this? This this is a Caribou. It, it was a plane that was ordered by the U.S. Army, uh, designed by De Havilland in Canada, and it was deployed to Vietnam. Each of the, my planes is a specific airplane. Right, yeah. and you have another one. You have another one that's almost like a—it's almost like a museum piece. Describe that one. That is a uh, SE-5A. It's the frontline fighter for the RAF in 1919, at the end of World War One. That's one of my best efforts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's gorgeous. And then you have you have another plane that's a duplicate of a plane that you used to own and fly. I have a number of those. There's one especially. It's a third scale in the other room. Uh, that's a J3 Cub. Uh, it's a one-third scale of one I used to fly into Milton Field back in the day. Just keep your eye on the airplane. If you see the nose dropping and the airplane going down, just pull the nose back up a pull little bit. Pull the nose back. So it's pull okay, and pull, push. Pull and push. Okay. If you want to turn to the left, just move the stick to the left a little bit. Okay. Okay, now watch it. If you hold it to the left long enough, it'll just keep rolling and rolling oh. and rolling. So when it's rolled enough, you're making a gentle turn, just let it come back. I think that it's really great uh, for people young and old to come out here to learn uh, and to uh, show off a little bit. <laughs> Being able to fly in all, all the space in the air is kind of freeing. Our plane is normally like a 14 foot wingspan. And this year we're trying to carry like about 50 pounds of payload. So to me, it's just really interesting that you can engineer planes and design them in a way where you can get like 50 pounds of weight to kind of soar through the sky and move and be aerodynamic. I'm rebuilding a plane for a friend. 
And this is the motor that came off of it. It's never been flown, actually, but uh, I haven't used this. This is an internal combustion motor. It's one of those loud things that people sometimes complain about with our hobby. Right. Uh, but uh, this plane is 90 uh, inch wingspan and it's a Cub. And I, I, I'm removing this and replacing it with this. That is the equivalent power, but it's other than the little sound of the propeller going through the air, it's almost entirely silent. Right, so this is electric, and this is where a lot of radio control club members are going these days. Most people, right? 95 or more percent of our flights this summer have been with electric power, right. which basically I brought to this club 14 years ago. Wow. Uh, I worked with electric flight uh, in retirement uh, with a company uh, to develop this kind of thing. And so that's where all this stuff came from. Well, and every year in the fall, you all have an annual event. The Don Reed. Yes, and yeah. people come, members come, members yep. from other clubs come. Neighbors come. Neighbors come, the community comes. Yeah. Describe that scene and describe, I mean, the variety of planes. You're going to have something like this, but then you're going to have some of these little teeny, just basic planes. Well, absolutely so. Uh, you'll see the multi-rotors flying. You'll see helicopters flying. Uh, you'll see a lot of fixed wing. Uh, you'll see a lot of people. Uh, it's a nice event, a nice outing for people. And um, of course, anybody in the community is welcome to come. Oh, this is great. Hayward, thank you so much. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> you may not have the money to fly a real plane or the experience, but you can still get some of these little models and really take to the skies. and. Uh, I think it's really entertaining. It just feels amazing because, you know, you're looking up, you're standing in weather, and it's really nice out today. It's fun flying a plane. Okay, it's I'm your going plane. up. Oh, 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 okay. come back down. Oh, yeah, you oh. got it. You no, guys, go I'm going to. Where's it going? Wherever you ah, want it to. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> I'm going in circles. Yeah, okay. This is very like me. Roll to the left. <laughs> Roll to the left. Ooh, oh. Hey, 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 I'm doing flips. I'm going to need a little oh, more good. time with this. That was perfect. <laughs> really? You like those flips, yeah. did you?